All right, crew, here's the deal. Um, when I do any strength and conditioning with my gymnast, especially the kids, or with new up and coming CrossFitters, we want to build this strength foundation. You know, I always talk about what comes first, strength or skill? Well, you know, it's like the chicken or the egg. You don't really know, but everything has to go mixed together. But I always want to develop some sort of strength foundation, and I want to always start by addressing midline first and then the extremity. In this case, what we're trying to develop is some positional strength in the shoulder, which will be this turn up, this wind up, this little shoulder extra rotation, and we can do it with the rings really well. I don't know if you ever tried doing Fran, but with ring rows, it sucks, right? So ring rows are very hard, even though we use them as a nice scale for people that can't do pull-ups yet. But what I want to do, I also want to dig a little bit deeper. Now, I get to hang out with a lot of power lifters here and they do a lot of benching. And some of the things that they say is, if I can get my shoulder blade back and down, everything on the bench, and I can really wind up, now I can really get into a good shoulder position and I can use my assistance, which is the elbow, to actually allow the movement to start happening. So the same thing is going to happen here with the ring row. I know a lot of people do this ring row with this perfectly straight body position, but what I have been starting to work on is looking for more extension globally. So what I'm talking about is this. Can I get my feet up on the box, and instead of being in this closed body position, actually being here, way more extended. Something that I've seen is that a lot of our athletes, especially CrossFit athletes, don't have the capacity to extend the hip. A, they're tight, so they need a little Kelly Starrett. But B, they just don't know how to squeeze their butt and get their hips in extension. If you can't get your butt and hips in extension, you don't have a neutral pelvis. And if you don't have a neutral pelvis, you can't stack up the spine. And if you don't have access to the spine, it's very hard to actually find a proper shoulder position. So by putting our athletes into extension, global extension, I'm not saying overextension, broken butt syndrome, now I can actually get my athletes to find their shoulder a little bit more. So once again, I'm going to go into that same position. Hips are going to come up as much as they can. I actually let my chin drop back a little bit. And now if you look at my shoulders, what I'm going to try to do is just pull my shoulder blades back and down. Now flip my hands. And now I'm actually sitting on a wound up joint where I'm actually on the shelf. And I can actually feel like I'm locked in. And that lock-in is what I want to find, not just for benching, not just for push-ups, but also, what does it look like when I'm deadlifting? What does it look like when I'm setting up my shoulder, my snatch, my clean, and then trying to separate the rest? Well, it all starts here, and this is where we want to start working on it. And what we notice is that the more global extension I can get my athlete into, the more mid-range I can put that shoulder in, and now I have more access to external rotation, and I can get my ring row going. Now, one of the biggest faults that I see in ring rows is that people try to pull with their arms and try to use their hands. And we see this weird little wrist kink start happening. So what I start thinking about is just, can I get my shoulder in position? And can I snap my elbow behind my back? Snap my elbow behind my back. And this snap of the elbow behind my back is actually my transition on the muscle up. A lot of our athletes have great pull-ups great dips, but somehow this range of motion right here does not exist. There's no strength of movement. I'm not talking about one rep max strength, I'm talking about the capacity to move. So just by doing ring rows in a globally extended body position, which is hips up, I can get more access to the shoulder, and now instead of pulling with my hands, what I'm doing is I'm actually snapping my elbows behind my back. Elbows behind my back. And that rip of the elbow behind my back is actually facilitating extension in the shoulder. And that's what I want to start working on. Now I can start taking care of this and say, if I was in an extended body position, I can take it into more neutral and then even hollow. And then once I get to those positions where I can actually access the shoulder and tweak the rest, the global position, then I can start addressing more skill. And the skill will come with the following. Can I use a full snap of the hip to actually get elevation? So what I'm looking at is, can I start in this position, which is kind of an exaggerated hollow body position, can I finish an extension? Well, that's all I'm looking for. And it's not my rib cage shooting here, it's actually my hip popping up. If I can pop that hip aggressively, you'll notice that I get a little bit of elevation. So what I do is I switch my box, 
grab a lower box, and now I can do that hip extension, followed by a little ring row. So it's hip row, hip row. So it becomes kipping ring rows. And kipping ring rows are actually legit if you understand the concept of skill and the skill transfer to other things. Once you have that kipping ring row, you can even allow your feet to come off of the box. And what we're seeing here is this, hip pull, hip pull. And now, immediately, as soon as the feet release, you notice that the elbows actually extend a little bit more and it looks like my first pull for the muscle up. So being able to start everything in extension, get the shoulder, externally rotate to have more access, I'm at more mid-range, then manipulating the rest of the body, adding the bow for the skill will give me skill transfer exercise where I start with strength, finish with skill, but it all comes together in the middle and that's where we live.